He made a way, yo. Oh. Oh. Every day He made a way yo Hi everybody, happy Saturday. Welcome to Elevation TV Network, home of the one and only Gifted. Yes, I am your host Shani Salmon Godfrey and we are back. We were off last week because of course always when we're not here, we are making moves to elevate and make the network better for you. So great big welcome to you. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever in the world you are. Hi, Pastor Kyle. It's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> so welcome, 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 welcome. So guys, how are you guys doing? It's actually going to be a great episode tonight. It's a part two to one that we had. And I mean, the testimonies that came was just so mind-blowing that we had to come back and bring on back prophetess baker so yeah she's gonna be on and it's gonna be amazing it's going to be amazing the gifted magazine guys is still coming out gifted directory is actually updated to where you can search the, the previous gifted by their locations like pastor butler Amazing gifted you can go on to our website elevation TV network and actually connect with them You'll see his Facebook page and everything you can go and contact him That's how we're here to help you elevate so welcome 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 and if this is your first time joining us the gifted is the world changer, the mover the shaker the kingdom builder the people that's not just building a marketplace for themselves or even building a, a name for themselves or even building a church for themselves they are the kingdom builders that come here every week twice a week just to breathe some life back into us just to empower us motivate encourage to help us get delivered to get us to our next level so that's why they're here and I'm excited I love this song <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome. So I'm going to bring her on and she's going to come on and we are going to dive on in because you know, time is the only thing we can't buy, so I cherish it. So hold on. guys we are coming out with a not only do we have elevate blog that's out elevate blog is now open so if you want to guess right for our blog elevate blog on our network feel free to just send us your story we're here for you we are here to give you as much faith tool as possible so if you are a writer even if you're not a writer and you have a story to tell let us know let us know, let us know, let us know, and absolutely we will get you to where 
get you to purpose. So Elevate Blog, it's up. You have a story to tell. You can share your story with us. We do have a new program coming out, Divine Intervention. Yes. <laughs> so with Divine Intervention... It's going to be different men and women of all walks of life. They're going to come on and they're just going to share their story, where they're coming from and how God took them from it. They're going to go into details and about it. I mean, the gifted, we talk mm -hmm. about it, but we don't really talk about it, talk about it. They're going to raw, uncut talk about it because you know what? For we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and through the power of our testimony. And we're going to do exactly that. They are going to testify and somebody's going to get delivered. You know, so it's going to be great. It is going to be great. And it's coming out soon. And we do have a cartoon coming out for the kids too. You already know. Biblical teaching with real life applications. We have a cartoon coming out. And I'm not going to give away the, the juice yet. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> That's enough updates. You want updates? Go to our website and subscribe to the email list. Okay. Yes, that's VIP news. <laughs> You'll get all the news everybody else. <laughs> Hi. Hello. So beautiful as usual. <laughs> Girl, uh, I just came from running and exercising, so it's like mad dash for the shower, everything. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. Hello, everyone in Facebook world and land. Good evening. Good evening. We, I am so happy to have you on, and I'm telling them that this is part two. Yes, I, part oh two. man, just mm -hmm. listening to you say part two. Oh man, some of the emails and the inbox and messenger that I have been receiving since the last broadcast. Oh my God, it's just been amazing that people, you know, needed to hear a word about how they can, you know, how they can become healed, set free, and delivered from what they've experienced. Right. So let us pray, and then we're going to dive right on in, because guys, yes, we Go start ahead. with prayer, and then we just go on in. So I'm already excited, so that's why I just got to stop myself and pray. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence tonight, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you for allowing us another opportunity to come on and fellowship to come on and to just share with the viewers from all over the world. Lord, we want to thank you for the lives that's being impacted by this network and the lives that's being changed. And for every person that, that's listening on tonight, Lord God, that we're just talking about about what they're going through, that you'll just hold them together, Lord God, that you'll just touch that wound, Lord God. Lord, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the mm -hmm. glory now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So, Prophetess, introduce yourself to us again for the new viewers that's coming on, because, I mean, you are like superwoman. You everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, wow. Many hats. Yes, many hats. Listen, um, to those of you that were not with us on the last broadcast, I am Prophetess Marie Baker. I live in the great state of Georgia, Atlanta, GA. Um, I'm a mo proud mother of three and a great, great proud mother, mother, mother. I'm sugar, sugar to three grandbabies, not grandma. I'm glamma and sugar, sugar to three wonderful and amazing grandchildren two granddaughters and one grandson. Uh, what more can I say? Hey, let me say this real quick when you said introduce. I need you guys to be on the watch, on the listen, on the lookout for my new book. I won't give you much right now. Um, <laughs> we're going to be launching it real soon. Yeah. So as well, go ahead and say, I'm soon to be called a what? Author. <laughs> glory be to God. To God be all the glory. Yes, I'm soon to be an author. Um, I, as I said, I am a person who wears many hats, um, proud mother, um, about to say Arthur, um, retired so forth when it comes to being in public safety, law enforcement. I'm a, uh, a minister of the gospel. I don't glory in titles, but yes, um, hmm, many are called, few are chosen. I was one of the chosen ones to walk right. in the office of a prophet, prophetess. Oh, I could just go on and on, you know, background <laughs> firefighter, EMT. So I, I could just go on. Um, entrepreneur, life coach, mentor, 
I could just go mm -hmm. on, on, and on. Right. Guys, I mean, and I laughed because I came on and I said, the network, we have a new show, we have a cartoon. Oh, but that's enough. That's enough. I'm not giving away the rest. <laughs> and you came on and said the same thing. Yep, it's that kind of night, okay? <laughs> hey, my mother taught me when one thing uh, failed, always have something else to fall back on. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So guys, if you didn't catch the first, first broadcast, we did it about 13, literally 13 days ago. And I want you guys to go back and I'm going to link to that here. And all of the videos is in, in um, the release order on our website, Elevation TV Network. Just go to the Watch TV tab and you can see all of the videos. All right, so you don't have to stroll through all of the talking on Facebook. You can find it on the platform. Now, when we did the broadcast, we were talking about, first of all, Prophetess Baker owns a nonprofit. It's called Judah Dove. And with Judah Dove, she works with a lot of different type of women. And she's going to tell you, and young men too, but she specializes in the women. And she's going to tell you a lot more about that. After that broadcast, it was an overwhelming response. I mean, we were talking about everything. We went in, okay? For those of you that like to say we went in, we went all the way in <laughs> through the door, okay? We done kicked the door down and went right on in. And we were talking about rape victims, right? Women in trafficking. And we were talking about not just the abuse e the abuser the survivors and yes. the praise we were talking about it all because that's what that's what she does she specializes in that and then again she had the law enforcement background so i mean we were hearing just like the real from both sides and then the prophetess part of her so we, she was just giving us the full circle of everything it was a overwhelming response of people that's saying that's me that's my story you're talking about me and then the next day the next, next day, a 16-year-old girl was raped. Yes. Literally was raped. And Prophetess is going to, she's going to just take over from here. And she's just going to just do what she do. Because <laughs> when we do these things, we never really, we never really understand the magnitude and the, capa the capacity of the people that that's being impacted. And that's why I keep saying that every week we come on, because every week we come on, somebody's saying, that's me. Whether it's struggling to move from a certain situation or they were abused or suicidal and they were addicted, they had PTSD, like all of the gifted come on and they touch real issues. So, enough of me. <laughs> now you can have profit. <laughs> Hi, well, Linda. For, Welcome. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Come on in. And the thing I would like to say first and foremost, if you're on, on this live broadcast and if you're listening at the sound of my voice, if you would, please reach out to some, someone. Share this right. with as many right. women, especially women. I need the mothers on this broadcast. I need their listening ears. I need the mothers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be you have what I consider to be fathers that are single parents as well. I need them on this broadcast. I need them to be listening to this broadcast. So if you would, hit share, hit like, but I need you to share it with as many of your friends as you can Possible. right now. Go do it now. If you're listening at the sound of my voice, share this with as many people as possible right now. I need them to tap in and come on right now and listen because I'm going to share some valuable information with you on this evening that I need for you to know, especially as mothers, especially as mothers that have children. Right. So if you would, please share now. Like and share and get as many people to tune in as possible right now. Right. My God. I'll give you a second or two to do that, if you would. To share I'm getting my share people. on too, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting my share on too, so my friends yeah. <laughs> can't make it deeper. <laughs> Come get <laughs> They'd be so bad at me, like, you just never invite us to stuff. <laughs> well, for me, what it, you know, it's just like we were speaking. Um, I had a couple of my friends that tuned in, 
and a couple of them that watched the broadcast after it was over. And the the response was, again, it was amazing. So this is why I'm asking that just hit share, hit share, hit share, and get as many people to tap in as possible. We don't know who's, who's out there that needs this word, that needs this information, because this is something right now that I am finding. The more I watch, uh, as we call it, the Me Too, <laughs> with, right. as we said before, all of the stars, mm -hmm. if they can jump on board and be support or support system to another movie star, singer, rapper, what have you, I need for as many women to get on this broadcast wow. and listen and be a support to their own children. Wow. To and for their own children. Because the children that we deal with at Judah Dove, they're your own children. They're everyday children. Huh. I won't even begin to mention the, the age of some of these survivors. And as I said, we don't call them victims even though they were victimized, but we call them survivors. So this is for us. The main thing for me on today is getting in tune and getting in touch with mothers, women right. that have children, women that are single parents, and even the ones that are married. There is no certain arena when it comes to a predator. Right. They don't care. And this is why I'm, I'm just asking, share, 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 because they need to hear this. And this is where I'm going to tap in at, because a lot of us, you know, as I stated from the last broadcast, we have a tendency that, uh, how would I say, we don't want to listen to our children. And as I said, I'll go back and somewhat just retouch, retouch on something that we talked about. So for right. us, our children, they come here pure and innocent. We train our children to lie, first and foremost. We do. That first time a, a bill collector or someone knocks at the door or whatever that you don't want to see, don't want to be bothered with. But what's the first thing we tell those children? Tell them that I'm not home. Right. But fail to realize on that first chance or that first try, what did your child say? My mom said to tell, to tell me you he's not home. You got a little bit disturbed or upset, even mad that your child didn't tell them in a proper way, but you were training your child then to lie. But this is something serious when it comes to the arena and the area of your child being raped, molested, and sexually exploited. If someone, you know, comes to you with, you know, and says, uh, your child came to me and said someone's talking to them in a sexual manner or someone touched your child, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to my child. I, I need to get to my child and talk to my child. Because right now in this hour, we deal with a lot of children, and I'm going there. So I don't know who's on here now as of yet, but I'm going there. We're going straight in, as you said. That will tell me. I told my mom, but she didn't believe. Usually. I told mom, Usually. but she didn't believe. Mm -hmm. Now, we, 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 as I said, we're going in. Now, first things first, ladies, first things first. We're going in, supporters. Are you assured or... When it comes to the man that you have in your life, especially mm -hmm. those of you that have these men in your homes, the stepfathers, whether you're married to them or you're on the verge or you're doing the dating scene, you're, on, you're just the uncles, the, the uh, uncles. Uh huh. The, okay. There, I was, I didn't want to go there, but we're going to go there too. You <laughs> come. And I, course, and I, you know what, why I said the uncles, because I have seen that to where I even had to address that where I see different, you know, women, they'll have men that they're dating and they say, call the, the man such an uncle, such and such. And I mm -hmm. said that, especially with little kids, I said, that's kind of weird. And you're sending a mixed signal because if you're displaying a lot of different type of affection around this man and you're going to, and you're telling the, the kid, that's the uncle, if, that, if that's his uncle, that's your brother. So okay. let's get that established. But, okay. Just like you said, but again, you're teaching and training your child to lie. Right. Because now even, they may be young, but wait now, this is your child. Your child, you know, unless your, your brothers or your siblings are not in the, within the same state, I'm assured that somehow, some way, they have had some form of contact with each of your brothers. So again, right there, let's just address the lies. Please stop the lies. Please. 
because they can be harm uh, be harmful in more ways than one, or right. they can become more harmful in more ways than one. So we're just going to address it. Period. Stop lying to your kids and stop teaching your kids to lie. We're going back. Listen to your kids. But to say that you don't believe your child, why? Now we're going to go, we're going to tap right into this thing. Because nine times out of ten, if you're telling me you don't believe your child, one, we're going to hit the nail right on the head. First of all, did you experience rape or molestation or sexual exploitation? Did someone do something to you? When you were a child, perhaps your child's age, or maybe as a teenager, an adolescent, what have you. It was something, uh, and there's some type of reason that you don't believe or say that you don't believe or possibly feel that your child is not telling you the truth. So let's go to the next one. You don't believe your child possibly because you've been there, done that, and you don't want to hear it, and you don't want this thing resurfacing in your life again. Wow. Why? Because you have not dealt with it yourself. You have not dealt with it yourself. So let's go to the third one. As I just said, your child is coming to you saying that, you know, something happened. You're saying you don't believe them. Why? Because you've been victimized. But let's go a step further. Did it happen to mom? Did it happen to grandma? We're going to tap in into that generation of curse where mom, it, it, it happened to her, but grandma, it happened to her. And they're both telling you, we're going to keep it in the family because most of the time, if something has happened or someone is violating and touching the child, it's not always the outsider. We're going to go in right where it, where it normally is. It's within the home or within the family. Right. It starts there. <laughs> right. Someone closest to them are the violators. And we don't want, no, we don't want to believe that Uncle Bob, Uncle Joe, Uncle whoever. The stepfather. Okay, all right. But when you tap in with the stepfather, the thing is, do you know who you're dating? Do you really know who you're dating? Or are you so caught up that this man is so-called paying your bills and supplying, rip, but you still won't take the word of your child? So who comes uh -huh. first? You've walked around for possibly eight, nine, ten months of your life because most of us carry our children between some of us less when we have the premature babies. But we've walked around for months carrying these children. This is your flesh and bone and flesh and blood. And you're trying to tell me that you do not believe your own child? You do not believe your own child. But again, as I just said, touching back on it, Children are only trained to lie. Children are only trained to lie. So let's deal, let's jump in and just deal with this generational curse of curse of grandma went through it, mama went through it, and now you. And right. now your child has possibly been victimized. And you don't want to accept the fact that your child has been victimized. Why? Again, because you didn't receive any help. And this is where, how would I, I won't say it, it's not, it's more than a problem. It's greater than a problem. Much greater than that. We, ha, we are so, how would we say now, um, it's overwhelmingly great in the world today. It's an everyday event, action, whatever you want to call it. Because I would say out of 100 children, at least per day, per day, worldwide, I would say there is at least probably about 12,000 kids getting raped, molested, violated, or something every day. Some of them we don't know about. Some of them we don't hear about. Why? because they don't get reported. It does not get reported. And this is what I'm saying supports, even in the schools, mm -hmm. this thing has gotten so great that you have other children that have been violated, that haven't gotten any help, that are now turning and they're violating mm -hmm. someone else's child. Children violating children. Right. So if I add that in, worldwide, you, I mean, it's just so great now. 
this thing is so big that it's gotten to me it's out of hand right and we're not paying it you know we're not really paying it any attention to be honest with you because be, you know before i even tried to even hmm. how would i say get a grasp on this thing after starting judah dove i was blown out of the water as to how i could speak about something to someone and i was just blown or pushed away so can you only imagine how many children out there have been violated, raped, molested, sexually explo exploited, and it goes un un unreported. It goes unreported. But to tell your own parents and you get turned away as to say, or to be call even called a liar, that you're lying. Why? Because of the person that has committed this offense is within the home. They're within the household. But they're not realizing, oh God, mm, they are not realizing the harm and the hurt and the depth of this thing that it's causing to that child. So now we're going into resentment, hatred, bitterness, anger. I could go on with all the different emotions and you know what I'm talking about. Especially when you tell me that your own parents don't or won't believe that someone within the family is taking advantage of you. This so let me ask you okay. let me ask you this question because I'm sitting here and I'm it's it's like this week I was in class and I was doing a, a lecture mm -hmm. and we were talking about emotional disorders mm -hmm. and we were talking about trauma and PTSD and a lot of the the young ladies well they're adults yes. adult learners <laughs> but you know they were talking about suppressing and they started mm -hmm. talking about one of them was raped by her sister's boyfriend and her sister is still with the boyfriend and she feel like one, her sister betrayed her. Two, the guy's in jail, but she feel like she didn't receive justice because, well, he got out of jail and now he's back in the same house with the sister. And the sister used to watch her kid and the sister have kids. So now she, her mind is just somewhere else. Yes, you know? yes, yes. And there's another one that she was raped again. You know how they love to call the, the, the uncles and then now her people, her family, blood family molested her molested her so she didn't open up until well in class <laughs> so how do the survivors deal let's use me as an example say for example i'm one of these two women what advice would you give me the first thing i'm going to tell you is that you need some counseling because there are so many mixed emotions and it dependent upon the time frame that this has happened, so of course, the years that they've suppressed it and held it in, and then the war, I can assure you, there's a war going on within that family, with the one with the sisters where it's going on. It is. There's, mm -hmm. there's a war going on, there's trust issues, and all sorts of things. And then when it comes to even, um, I'm sure, uh, because I was trying to listen to you closely and carefully, as to which one now, the sister herself has kids, right? Right, the one that that violated her, and now he's back in the home with the other sister who has kids. Right. right. Okay. Right. So right now, in the back of her mind, she's also worried about the the the, the kids that are in the house with this person. She is. Because she she is. already knows that this person is a predator, and the sister's not paying her any attention to letting her know or receiving her that okay, yeah, this was your man. He took advantage of me, and now I'm concerned that he's going to take advantage of your children. Right. So the first thing that she needs to do uh, as well is to make sure she have, a, if she can, is, is to have an up-close and relationship with those children. So when that time comes, of course, if this man does violate these children, she's going to be the one that has to report it, but at the same time, she needs to be going through a form of counseling and therapy because she needs it. Right. She needs therapy. Right. I, can right. I can assure you 
that this woman has so many, uh, I mean, how would I say? Let me just sum it up by saying unhealed hurt, unresolved issues. She's got a lot going on. She has a lot going on. And in order for this, I mean, I mean, it has to be a place of starting at the root of it. Again, I tell people, you got to go to the root, even though the root is this same person that has now been released from prison, jail, wherever, and that is now back in a home where there's children. And second of all, I don't understand, first of all, why he could be in the home with children if he is someone that has been to prison and if it was on that child charge and if he was, I've seen it. I've seen it. They sneak them back in anyway. Okay, but see, she needs to report it because number one, he's supposed to be registered as either a pedophile or something, a sexual offender or some type of way. He should be on paper. And what I mean by paper is within the, the law enforcement, the system, the judicial system. And what about the women, the women, young girls that they've been raped, they've been molested. And I've seen, and those, those type of things is not wounds that it ever, I don't believe that it ever 100 completely go away. The wound, I feel like they don't just, heal completely. They don't never completely. So, if they got justice, meaning the predator was arrested, some of them feel a little better. But what about the ones that they were violated and the predators, well, like you said, the moms didn't believe them and the predator still walking around, never really admit that he did it. How do they handle that? Okay. How do they That's handle the lack of justice? Okay, even with that, when it comes to the lack, the key is, are they old enough now? Because there are certain statute of limitations. And it depends. If the statute of limitations still has not run out, I would still do the paperwork on it. I would, I would get him charged for it and with it. There may just not be any, how would one say, physical evidence. But there's still a process and there's still things called what you call a polygraph and a mm -hmm. whole lot of things. There's a, a whole lot of things that have to come into play so far as, you know, even just to report it. And then they still yet go from there because there are still ways that things possibly still could be proven. And then thirdly, they may not even know that this person may have what we call priors. Right. He may have priors. He may have done it to someone else that did report it. And if his name comes up again, then they know more than likely he's still out there. He's still on the pa rampage. He's still he's roaming. He's roaming, and he's looking for his next his next victim or his next prey, someone to to prey on. Right. So the best so first would be for them to still yet report it. And again, mm -hmm. I I can't stress enough when it comes to people getting you have to get some help. Right. You have to get some help because if you don't, just like you said, we spoke last week. So far as I can get cut, burned, or something on my hand. I can put a Band-Aid on that wound. But the mere fact that is, I can think it's healed and take that Band-Aid off because why? It may have developed what we know as or are called a scab. But you still, I can move my hand and still say that my hand still feels sore. Why? Because underneath that scab, that wound is still infected or it's still festering. So in order for me to get rid of any type of what we what we call the festing or infection, infection. it has to be what treated it's got to right. be treated. so you have to you've got to go through some form of counseling and that's where it starts off you've got to get some counseling first and sometimes it depends on the severity of it as mm -hmm. to how deep and what type and or kind of counseling that you need to receive right some of these wounds are so deeply embedded. Some of these women have been re uh, raped or molested, you know, the incest. So many Usually. years ago, but it's still there. It's still, it's, it, to me, let me just say this. It's still fresh. Right. And, you know, I want to say this. Excuse me, guys. I'm a little, uh, <laughs> I'm rebuking the congestion, but it's coming. But let me say this because 
a lot of times when I'm doing different lectures, right? Different, mm -hmm. I'm talking to different groups. I always say, I'm Jamaican and I'm extra country. And <laughs> I've seen <laughs> like extra, <laughs> I'm the country that the country people call country, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in the country, I've seen a lot. And this it's like incest and molestation and rape becomes the norm. And so many people, I can tell you, if I group 10 island women in a group together, 9 out of 10 have been raped and yes, one have been touched, yes, molested. Or it's, it's just, it's like a norm to the, mm -hmm. to the point where you said, Nobody want to talk about it. Nobody want to talk about it. And every time they bring up the subject, it's like, stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. And I do believe, and like Prophetess says, that now even the superstars, the millionaires are coming out, standing together and said the whole Me Too thing. And Prophetess has a movement that she has that says silent no more. And a lot more other women is coming, like there's a... um. Um, a, a, what you call it, another silent, um, breaking the silence conference in August in Nigeria. It's just so many women that they talk about this, but then on the other hand, you have the ones that saying, why do we keep talking about this? It's well, like, these are the ones, the ones that says, why do we keep talking about it? Because the wound is so deep when it comes to them. They've experienced it. I, I can assure you, most of them has gone through it, experienced, they, you know, it just, just the, even the thought of someone speaking about it, it stirs the wound. You get what I'm right. saying? It agitates the wound even the more. What we were just speaking of, upon, meaning that's the infestation of the wound. And so now it's just like almost like you have stuck something down in that wound and you've turned it, twisted, and you've agitated it all over again. And to me, for some that I've talked to, and they will tell you, it's just like now, I've been raped, molested, and violated all over again. Right. But right. That's the key. I keep saying, and I can't stress it enough, you have to get some counseling. There has to be a form of relief. Because if not, you take it into the relationships that you try and enter in with men, it doesn't work. They're wondering why you're acting a Usually certain, won't work. certain kind of way because they don't understand. And then the relationship doesn't work. And then you take that into the next relationship again because now you're angry and you're bitter because this man wouldn't stay with you because he couldn't understand why you were acting the way you were acting. And the cycle just continues. So therefore, you, you're alone. You're bitter. Why can't I get a man? Why can't I keep a man? And, and, and the list goes on, but it starts with you. You didn't ask. I'll say this to the ones at the sound of my voice. And I know there's, there's, oh boy, I can't even put a number on it. Because just like you said, one out of, when it comes to say 10 women, eight out of those 10 women have been raped, molested, sexually exploited. Out of every 10 women, I guarantee you. And sometimes all 10 of them have been. So you put 10 women in a room, guarantee you, eight to 10, 10 in the next room, guarantee you, it might be the whole, all 10 of them. But the key is, you've got to get some help because if you don't get some help, you your life is just, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere because that wound is always going to be there. It's going to be festing and it's going to keep you from, from furthering, going further in your life, even when it comes to your jobs and everything. You go to work and someone say, uh, you think he's trying to get, you know, uh, fresh with you, whatever, because everything is in the back of your mind. Predator, rapist, molester. You need some help. You've got to get to the root, to the core of this thing. And something that I mentioned before, the worst part of being raped, molested, or sexually exploited, um, I would say, from the point of maybe really understanding or comprehending, let's just say, I would give it an age about, say, 10. 10 to 12 years old, when you really are at that point where you really understand and you can remember things. It ain't, it's not just about the act that was committed against you, the violence, the trauma. It's also what's being said to you when that act is being committed. That's what I was going to say. And I, in the islands, I can say it happened. And if y'all ever hear, watch the last video and then y'all will see where I'm coming from. But 
it it's way before that because by the time we're 10 and 12 in the islands we cook and wash and clean and probably even have two jobs and that's just <laughs> the real so we are grown little women okay <laughs> so the thing about that is and i've seen it to where the predators tend to diminish and damage the self-esteem and if you ever been raped and molested and you want to know if you're delivered, watch Precious the movie. If you get angry and you want to cut them, then you need some help yourself. There's and residue. That, and yes. It'd be a trigger. It's a yes. trigger. I it's didn't know I was delivered until I could watch something. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm like, oh, girl, you should cut him. I'm like, okay, now I still got a problem. because I see? Okay, <laughs> but this is what I'm speaking about so far as the same young lady you gave me the scenario about, the two young women that came to you so for, um, you know, doing the class or whatever. These women, they have residue. This thing mm -hmm. is, it, it, whatever happened to them, I mean, mm -hmm. it's so fresh with them, I guarantee you, they can tell you step by step everything that happened and transpired during the commission of this act or this trauma yes. that happened mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. and with them. They mm -hmm. have got to get some word for word. of help. If they've not, number one, and what upsets me a lot on top of it too, let me go back a little bit. In the midst of that, so forth, even when it gets reported, and that's why I pray that anytime anything such as this happens, that it gets reported. Because once it's, it's reported, that not just the, the survivor, again, I don't like calling them victim, even though we've been victimized, but we are survivors. Because there's a lot of them out there and I'm going to speak, you know, to them as well. The ones that, you know, decided to take their lives. I wish I could have been there. I could have, uh, 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 that I could have helped. But there are uh, probably, probably hundreds and thousands of them that have, didn't survive. They're in, they're, they're in their grave because they couldn't handle what has happened to them. Right. So for me, it needs to get reported. That's step one. Step two, once you get it reported, that agency, law enforcement, as well as the, the judicial system, they're really supposed to, you know, offer that first session when it comes to those get them getting some type of counseling, not just the survivor, but that family. Because if you had, just say if you have a family of four and one of those, those children, one of those siblings is violated, mom's jacked up, dad's jacked up, the other siblings are jacked up too. It affects them all. So now you got a whole messed up family. The whole family's jacked up and tore up and needs some type of help because it's in the back of their mind with the dad. I allowed, I, I allowed something to happen to my child. I was supposed to be her protector. So you see right. with that, now dad's jacked up, messed up. Dad possibly want to get the, the, the Glock 40 or the 9 millimeter and go out and start killing folks. Mom, mom's so tore up and messed up from the floor up. The, and, and it's just like mom can't function. And then her life and different stuff possibly may change in her marriage. And, and that would be somewhat of a healthy family where they actually care. And on the flip side, let's talk to the ones that mom decides that she can, she's more valuable if she rent the daughter out. Because I'm telling you, I've seen so much things. I, I just got to stay in prayer so I could keep my own mind together. But there's those yes. where mom is saying to this girl, she's broken, and she she's a young girl. She's 20, well, she's older now, but this been going on her, her, her whole entire life. Now she's 22, the guy is 52, and mom is saying, yeah, you need to be with him because he's paying the mom for her, and they start, that's been happening to her since she was like 12. How do you, how speak to those, speak to those I, kind I, I'm of- I'm just, hey, truth be told, and I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. Number one, she need to get help, but then mom need to get some help. And the help mom really needs support is going through this foolishness and, and you've been selling your child. I'm just being honest. Truth be told, mom, look, you see this, clank, clank? Mom need to be locked up. Because if you're telling me this has been happening to someone since the age of 12, your butt need to be in jail. I'm sorry. You need to pay the price just like his butt need to be somewhere locked up. Right. My God. And this is what I'm talking about. People don't want, oh, that's my uncle. That's I, I'm sorry. You do not realize the damage that you're causing these children. Either they're going to, just like you said, commit suicide or mm -hmm. they're on the verge of it. Or right. they become very promiscuous 
more depressed. depending upon what's been mm-hmm. spoken to their spirit that it gets so embedded that they become uh, and I have nothing against the LGBT and, the, and all this different stuff. They need love too because I don't care what nobody said. Let's just address it. Most of them have been raped, molested, and violated too. And something that was said to them got so embedded. Oh, you're ugly. You're this. You're that. Why that? Usually. That, 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 that in the commission of Usually. the trauma, It gets so Usually. embedded in their spirit that that's all they hear. And then they don't get any help. Either they turn into a predator or uh, they go into this uh, shell that I don't want a man if you're a woman. And that, or that spirit is so embedded. And see, this spirit is being used by the Hasatan. I mean, what I mean by, by the Hasatan, the devil is using this. Because right now, you've tapped into something that is so prevalent in the church that it's, it's just a shame. Oh, I've seen and heard that to where women, ministers, they're bisexual. And when we have a conversation, they said, you know what, I, tr- I don't really trust men because I was raped. And I was like, okay, well, let's talk about it. And they never really sat down and addressed nope. what nope. happened. And they a lot of them, they're homosexual. They and when we get to the core of it, right, they're like, oh, Come yeah, on. you know, I was raped. I was molested. And I was Come like, on. okay, now, now we're on to something. Now let's talk about that. Let's open that wound so we can, Come just on. like the word said, we can't put a new patch on old garment. You got to no. cut that garment. And then we got to stitch that new patch, that old patch into it. Just like the new wine and old bottle. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. And you know what? And I'm going to say this. And y'all know, I just, I'm just going to be real. When they said a lot of the priests are on TV going to prison for messing with the little young boys. It don't just happen with the priests. It happened with a whole lot of other people. They just don't. They're not brave enough to call 911. That's all it is. Because they have, in these smaller churches, it's kind of like, a cult-like following. They will kill you for the pastor. No matter what he do, they will have your head on a platter for that pastor. Especially if he go by the title apostle or prophet. Oh, don't you talk about that pastor. He can molest all them little boys. The devil is a liar. The they devil don't is call a liar. Nobody. The devil and that's is a what's liar. happening. I know that, that it is, but not on my watch. Because, see, they fell into realize even I, I will go as far as to say, I will go as far as to say because I've been doing this so long. Even the apostles, the bishops, apostles, preachers, pastors, and et cetera, evangelists, you know, the males and females. Mm-hmm. You're human in flesh for, first, but at the same token in time, a lot of them have been raped, molested, and so on themselves. Right. And again, it goes back, as I said, My when God. you don't get any help, you don't get any healing. And so now you're, you know, you didn't get the healing that you needed and all of that stuff that was spoken into your ear while you were the victim and being victimized, never got hit. And now this thing is progressing and that you have no control and now you out of control. It starts with those closest to them before us again, who's closest to me? Is it my niece, my nephew, my nephew, whoever you violate them. And then when you find yourself in the church my and God. then you find in the next day, you violate other people's children, but you don't understand. Now you're destroying that child's life. You know, it's so funny in a conversation I had with a predator just came to my spirit. And I remember talking to the predator and what the predator said to me is, I never thought it was a boy. He molested his sister. Well, he raped his sister rather. And he was like, never would I thought that I would do that. And to be honest with you, I don't even know why I did that. And he acknowledged like, I know I really hurt her. And I don't think I could ever apologize for her to really believe me. And I myself don't even know how I did that. Again, like I said, it's something about that spirit that, and and I'm a firm believer of this. Trust me, I'm a firm believer of this. You know where it says that we are female. We're the recipients. And a man, he is the depositor. So Mm. when certain things happen, and you know what I'm referring to, that, you know, and and the old saying is, if whoever a woman has sex with, the man has sex with all the same people that she has had sex with just because he was there with her and so on. But the thing is, certain things get dropped into their spirit when these things happen. 
And if you don't get any help, as I say, it's just the same thing when you hear a person say, I'm hearing voices. When it comes to people being mentally, you know, have that mental, you know, it's mental it's so right. And, mm-hmm. and, and, hey, that's <laughs> it takes over. It takes control. I, you know, like I said, I can't go into further detail. We've had someone to say, it's just like, he committed something, and when it was all over, he said he didn't even, it was like he he, it, he was out of himself when he was doing it. And when he came right. to himself, he weeped and cried like a baby because he didn't believe he had did what he had did. My God. But it also still went back to the mere fact, guess what? Again, it happened to him. If you do not get help as a victim from a victim, which we I don't like calling them victims, as a survivor, you then become possibly a predator because it happened to you. You didn't get any help. And, and just like I said, you got to deal with the root of that thing. You got to deal with that spirit. Some people call them demons, whatever, and stuff like whatever you call it. But it's there. It's prevalent. And you got to deal with it because depression can turn into suicide. And that's a spirit as well, too. I've seen that on. It's, it's the headlines. Headlines right now is... Me too. And suicide. Rape, sexual molestation, and suicide. That's the headlines. That's on every news channel, every day, every week. I mean, it's just what it is. And that's why us as kingdom builders, we have to address these things because God gave us the authority to change some things. And if we're not using that authority, first of all, that I don't believe as much preachers and teachers and prophets and prophetess and evangelists i mean the list goes on and on they got some new stuff that i didn't even knew that I, you know i don't even know where they come from with the new stuff but, i mean i'm like oh i'm like now i gotta be like lord what's this ask google no results found i don't know just that new so with all of the offices that we have i don't believe that we should be in a season like this where we're at where it seems like we're almost powerless. I do believe that the problem is we're not speaking up. And if you are a predator and you know you are struggling with those type of thoughts and intentions, you need to seek counsel in your own self. You need to go seek help yourself. I don't believe you should stay there and start manifesting those things, those actions rather. Well, see, that takes us back to the last show. Um, as I said, you're walking around as a wounded warrior and then you take on that title as you say so far is that you've accepted the calling that you say God has placed upon your life but first and foremost you're human yes you are you're human you're flesh but the thing is this needed to be dealt with before you uh, said yes and accepted the calling you should have brought your flesh under subjection and yes. dealt with your hurt yes. unhealed right. hurts again unresolved issues again and now you are, you know, just like I said, passing that issue on to the next person because now you're mm-hmm. violating someone else. And again, mm-hmm. again, the cycle keeps repeating itself. It keeps repeating itself. And I would go back and say again, if you cannot get your flesh under subjection, sit down. Sit down because this is the hour of exposure. This has gone on too long that they say, oh, the bishop did this, this, and the third, and everybody, exactly what you said. No, you don't talk about the bishop. No, you don't talk about the apostle. No, you don't talk about the priest. You don't do this. You don't, the devil is a liar. You are destroying someone's life. Literally. You are literally destroying someone's life. They didn't ask you to destroy their life. They were pure. A lot of these babies are still yet pure. And you're destroying their life. Some of these, like you said, some of these women, they, they turn to drugs. They turn, it, they become too sexual, meaning promiscuous, and having sex every time you look around. Then you got those that wind up on the streets because they've been introduced to sex, drugs, alcohol, and everything else, you know, from being exploited out there. They think that's the only life for them. And once they experience it, there's no hope for me. No one cares for me. No one loves me anymore because I'm so messed up. The devil is a liar. There's hope for everyone. There's hope for every survivor at the sound of my voice. 
but you gotta want to. You want some help. You gotta want some help. Come out of that shell and come out of the, out of saying, uh, "Why do you talk about it?" No, that's the first step to you being healed, set free, and I'll delivered. Is it. to talk about it and to acknowledge the fact that yes, someone took advantage of me. I forgive me first. So forgive yourself first. That's I forgive me yourself. because you didn't do anything wrong to cause anyone to take advantage of you. Second of all, you got to forgive them. And a lot of people hate to hear me say that, but you do. Forgive God so that God will continue to forgive you. For yes, when you sin or when you fall short. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, not all, I would say 80%, but that other 20, some of them are just predators. They watch porn so much and all kinds of crazy stuff. I was going, now. Mm, I'm a, let's go talk about the porn stuff. prophetess because, you know, I, would, I got a list and I'm making my list. So I don't lose track. But the porn thing. And listen, last show, if you watch that, because that will kind of get you ready for this one. But the porn, a lot of little, a lot of predators, they have this thing. And especially, and I'm going to talk about island peoples because I know island peoples and I've seen it. And they'll watch porn in the house with these young men or these young women. And I know some women predators that they will prey on men, women, and children. Yes, yes. Because they are so programmed to watch porn at a yes. young age because the parents use this line. This is the line they use. I will rather you do it home where I can watch you than for you to go out in the street and do it. Woo, you are destroying your own child. Again, and if that parent is bold enough to say and do that, again, nine times out of ten, mama didn't been raped, molested, or mama went through the same thing. So now, here we go again with the generation of cur a, a generational curse of you passing down the same thing that you used to do, which is wrong, to your child. You're supposed to be protecting your child from all of right. this. If, if anything, you want your child to be remain pure until the day that she's married. Or he's married. And let's go there when it comes to that. It's just not, like we said, not just the little girls. Predators now are male and female. And they're violating our children, male and females. This is where a lot of this stuff comes in. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm assured, like I said, a lot of these young men, this is why they wind up being gay. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Somebody violated you, whether it was your uncle, your your cousin, your brother, your uncle, the priest, the, the, the sports pastor, coach. Something happened. And nowadays in this hour, children are now violating each other. And a lot of people don't don't know that because this child got violated. Yes, it's happening in the schools. They don't want to tell it because of the privacy issues and certain stuff they cannot t uh, talk about. It's prevalent. It's happening. These boys and young girls are going in the bathroom. And the Think about when we dead. were in school. When I was in school, I seen it. And then they they call it a train and a whole lot of men, boys go sleep with the little girl and then talk about it and ruin her self-esteem. And now she want to kill herself. And I, I have, you know what, especially on the sports team, you have the one or few girls that they be molesting. And I mean, we're athletes. They going to talk and we hear it and we see it. And it, it's happening. It's, it's, it's really deep. It's happening. We see yes. it our own self. We see yes. it. Yes. Truth be told, I guarantee you, you'll find some of them. I love it because they, they'll look at me. They, they're like, you know what? I can talk to you. You know, some of the ones that are gay and lesbians and stuff. And they say, because you don't judge me. I say, I can't judge you. The Bible teaches us we're going to be judged by God, by Christ. So why should I judge you? Because, see, I know there's a root to it. And when I ask them, what happened to you? A lot of them, you know, even down to some of the ones I was born. The devil is a lie. You were not born that way. God was not confused when he created us. He was not. So tell the truth. And when we get to talking and they get comfortable and I let them know, I'm not here to judge. I want to hear your story. And right. they'll, they're like, well, prophetess, yes, my mother's boyfriend took advantage of me or my mother's, you know, whatever, you know, my, my, my mom's husband took advantage of me or the neighbor took advantage of me. But or the gymnastic mom, coach. Uh, most of the time, a lot of times, I, I, I get it all the time. Um, I was threatened, told me if I did tell, they would kill me, they would kill the family, and Usually. all of this. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Or then, of course, you have the things uh, the, the thing where, you know, they, they got to smooth it over. They're going to offer them money. They buy them off. They buy them all the things and all the big toys and all the uh, expensive gifts and the shoes and 
tell the truth, shame the devil. It's a fact. It is what it is. But to continue to say God created something that he speaks totally against in his word? Oh, come on. Right. Again, tell the truth. Something happened in your life. Someone took advantage of you and you did not get the proper care and help that you needed. You didn't. And this is what, what I mean, if we're going to put a stop on to this, we, I'm sorry, we got to take this prosecution thing to a whole nother level. Uh, I don't know to say, because I often think about it, so far as is, is truly is there a secure way of accountability as to even when they go to jail and or prison, if that if they're released, that accountability. Because right now you have departments to say that, okay, that you have you're on the sex registry or you have to register. Really? And you really think they're gonna register? It's the first right. thing to force when I was into it, one of the first ones I locked up. They let him go, and only for me to find out he was supposed to go live with his brother in a rural area. Are you for real? Okay, you sending him, letting him, allowing him to go live and dwell in a rural area where no one knows anything about, about him. him. Nothing. And all he's going to do is have, you know, have a field day and praying on someone else's child. Needless to say, I knew he wouldn't stay there long, and I kept saying accountability again, that he left that area, went to another area, befriended a woman, befriended a woman, and this is why I'm saying women. This is why I wanted these women on here. He befriended this woman only to molest all three of her children. He violated all three of her children, but the system failed by letting him go. Are you serious? No accountability. None. And the worst part for me, I'm going there. I'm not afraid. The worst of it is you have a lot of these predators sitting on in the judge's seat. Yep. They wear attorney's uh, suits. They wear mm -hmm. uh, uh, the white jackets. They're doctors. They're lawyers. They're <laughs> really? Senators, oh, I've seen doctors that go, to, and I'm in healthcare, and I've seen doctors that's been arrested for molest, molesting the patients. I mean, it's deep. And and even after he confessed, his staff was still saying, no, not him. I'm like, are you not hearing the words that is coming out of his mouth? He said it's him. Now believe it. <laughs> it's real. The proof is in the pudding. And this is what I'm saying now. Now let's take a step back. It's the same thing like we just said. We're going there. And now it's more prevalent than ever in the church. So mm -hmm. you got doctors, lawyers, attorneys, senators, governors, judges, uh, and the pastors, preachers, teachers, apostles, bishops, mm -hmm. priests. Everybody. They're mm -hmm. all violating our children. Right. They're all violating our children. And so now we're wondering why our children are committing suicide. Their grades are dropping. Um, they're running away. They're, it's just so much. And then again, they're, they're you know, turning to the same sex and all of this being gay and lesbians. And, you know, it's, mm, but there's a root to everything. And that's why I tell people, don't, don't do that. When I see people doing, oh, you're a bulldagger, you're this, you're a lesbian, you're a dyke, you're this, you're that, you're sissy, you're faggot. Don't do that. Don't do that because you don't know the root. You don't know the story. Right. You do not know the story. Right. Everyone was not strong enough. Hmm. Everyone wasn't right. strong enough right. to get through and surpass what happened to them. And this is why hmm. I'm saying it has to be I mean, we got to come out of this place of denial and I don't care. Okay, you can say you don't care, but then when it hits close to your home or hits your home, then what? Then what? Right. Then what? Again, right here in the city of Atlanta, I sat there and they were looking at me like, why are you looking like that? And they were like, oh my God. Oh my. I said, what? What? You act as if you're not surprised. I say, I'm not. 
the man offered the lady $200 to buy her child. That is the boldness of this spirit. But the thing is, again, 80% were victims themselves. 20% they're just straight predator, pedophile, and, and, and so much more rapist because uh, of that spirit of watching porn, this, that, and the third. That, you know, but it is what it is. But we've got to get on our faces, get back on the wall, and we got to do some serious praying. And then we need to come together and, and to try and come up with a solution. We need to bum, uh, bombard the uh, governments and all and let them know we won't stand any longer for our children being raped, molested, and sexually exploited. We have a child sitting in prison right now because she killed a pimp uh, uh, because he, he violated her. Huh. And she was tired of somebody forcing themselves on her. But you convict the child, the victim. Rep mm, oh, God, help me, Jesus. Huh. They convicted that child. And now it's like fighting to get this baby out of there, fighting for her life. You find her guilty, but you cannot hold uh, someone, someone that, uh, a penny any drug dealer, you give them life in prison, but someone that violated a child, you slap them on the wrist and they're back out in the world to do it again. Right. right. Because they have enough people with money protesting. Not even they have, there. Money they have their own association. Yes. But also, it's the authority that's on these, um, as I just said, that's sitting in these high places. Because a lot of them are pedophiles and rapists and molesters. Wow. So why would I fight against or come against something that I am doing or indulging in back my the rest and they're back out in the world? Right. Why, why would I? Why would I speak against it or... How would I say uh, when it comes to the time? Instead of me just slapping them on the wrist, we're going to give them life in prison. Why would I give someone life in prison when this person has been the one that's been, been supplying me with my porn pictures of little children, little girls, little boys? Or he was the one supplying me with the children, meaning he was holding these children hostage. I was right. going, getting off from work going over having as much sex as I want with the children, then going back home to my family like nothing has happened. Nothing. So why would I lock them up and throw away the key? Why would I? They're supplying me, you know, and supplying all, you know, really? Wow. <sighs> but the thing is now, where are the watchful eyes of the parents? These mothers, yes, I'm going get, to get back under these mothers. Does a man mean that much to you just because he's so-called paying, paying your bills that you won't believe your child? First and foremost, for me, what was the introduction like? Did this, did this child, did you take the child out to dinner or something and invite that person to say, mommy, you know, this, mommy's dating this person? Or did your child see this man coming out of your bedroom? Was that the introduction? And now here it is. He coming out of your bedroom. You leaving this man in the house and you have two, three daughters. You oh, going God. to work before he leaves. And you leave him in the house with your daughter. Did you check him out? Did you do a background check on him? Oh, let me get it. No, uh-uh. It's just the words that were coming out of his mouth sound. Just, they just sound to this. And he fooled me. He got the best of me because he gave me a couple of bucks to pay my bills. Or he acted like he was going to be the perfect man for me and my, my girls. Or even me and my boys. Did you check him out? Nowadays, you need to do it a check. You need to do a check. Because a lot of, I didn't know, I didn't know, did you check? When it's, he is listed right here in black and white, he's a pedophile, he's a rapist, he's a molester. How do someone check? So now we said check, right? Registry. If they're supposed to be registered, it should be an open file. 
It should be open file. If, you, if they're a registered sex offender, it should be open. If you live in a certain county, you go to that county and say, look, I'm, um, I'm, I'm looking to date someone, but I just want to be assured that this person is not on the sex offenders list. Then you also have the websites that will also, you put your zip code in, it's, what is it? It's, oh God, I should have looked, at, um, I had it written down, but because they come in so many different stages now. But you can put in your zip code for the area you live in for sex offenders or predators. It would give you a number to tell you an estimate as to how many live in, live in your area. But I often tell people if it says something like 36, 46, a lot of times the best thing for you to do is to multiply it by three. Hmm. Now, watch this again. They're not supposed to, but this is hard. I will say it's hard. So what do you do? They are not supposed to live in areas where there's a church, schools, playground. Need I go on? So where are they going to live? Because just about every neighborhood has churches, playgrounds, and schools. Uh -huh. So where are you uh -huh. going to go? Where are you going to put them? And most of the time, a lot of them, they're supposed to register. They don't. They let them out of there before they get them registered as sex offenders. That should be the first thing that they do upon going to jail and or prison already. Just stamp, just stamp in black and white. Predator, sex offender, whatever. When you hit the system, so for that you've been indicted and proven to be guilty of doing whatever. And even if you haven't been, meaning that still, we're watching you. We're watching you. Right. Because most of them, if I go back again and say, if you don't get help, and I've talked to one before, and I kept saying, you need to get help. Because he kept saying, it happened to me, and that's how I turned, I said, you need help. Because if not, you're going to keep repeating this, and you're going to wind up in prison and or dead because somebody's going to catch you possibly, and they're, they're not going to they're not gonna hold back. They're going to kill you. Because mm -hmm. everybody don't play about their kids. Right. Some people just don't care. You Especially don't survivors. You survive you that. You come hello. up out of that. I mean, hello. You, you don't might not be walking child. away in pieces. Hey, hey, like I said, you, it, it, nowadays, these folks are not, they just, they don't care. They'll say, oh, no, you will not violate my child and get caught. Um, there have been some that have been beat to a pole. They're like, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to beat you so bad that, you know. And when they got there, they didn't, they didn't lock the, the people up. They were caught in the midst of violating a child, and they almost killed them. And they didn't serve a day for doing it. Because they beat the brakes off them. Lord, forgive me, but they beat the brakes off them. And a couple of times, I hate to say it, it was another child. They violating another child. But the parents still beat them so bad. You've got to get help. Stop letting these generational curses and this spirit of Je the Jezebel spirit and the host. I mean, is this the host meaning Satan is using anything and every can thing he can to destroy the home and especially the godly home. You taking right. your church to, your, I mean, you taking your child to, to church and you sending them to children's church. Only why? Because the, the children, the, what do you call them? The youth minister is a pedophile and nobody knows. My God. And needless to say that, you know, it's always that the bishop or the apostle or the pastor is also always so friendly toward the children. Why? He's a pedophile or a child molester or a rapist. Huh. And they God. haven't got that they haven't gotten their flesh under subjection or under control. But you holding that title, but nobody knows, and that's why I keep saying it, a lot of times, not all times, a lot of times, they've been a victim themselves. They've been victimized themselves. Wow. So guys, I mean, we done addressed, I feel like, the whole full circle. So, you 
are struggling, whether you are the prey, I mean the survivor, the prey or the predator, whichever category you fall into, you need some help. How do you get help? One, there's organizations like Judah Dove. Okay, you're going to find you a counselor. You're going to find you, I mean, there's pastors and prophets. Not all of them is predators. Not all of us is criminals. Not all of us is everything. But you're going to find one. You're going to find somebody that's going to counsel you. There's a lot of organizations out there. Judah Dove website is judahdove.org. Go to judahdove.org and reach out. You can go to elevationtvnetwork.com and you can go to the gifted directory and you'll see Prophetess Baker and you can reach out to her. The gifted directory is now categorized by location so you can find a leader in your area that you want to speak to. And if they don't, they're not certified or specialized in that area, they'll point you to someone that is. But don't sit there silent and be wounded, especially if you have your own nonprofit, your own organization. And a lot of times, women, men, people like to start organizations because they've been there. They know the hurt, they know the pain, they know the struggle, and the struggle is real. And they want to reach as much people as they can. But you can't do your job effectively if you don't get help for yourself. Yeah. That's like having a gunshot wound and you are trying to drag 10 people out of a burning building. It's either you're going to collapse and all of you are going to burn up or you're going to have yes. to leave them and run. Yes. So yes. get help. Get help. Get gotcha. your wounds taken care of. Get your healing. And now you can go and rescue all 10 of those people. And, so and that's all of the you thing. make it out. Not, you know, not cutting you off, but that's the thing. What is it that God delivered you from? It may mm -hmm. just not be rape and molestation. Some that you know, everyone has not experienced that. But for you, but for some of the leaders out there, and I'm talking directly to the leaders, and I know some of you are going to listen to this broadcast. I pray that you do. What is it? Because you're you're not you're, you're imperfect. You're not perfect. There was something that you've dealt with, even as a child, adolescent, teenager, young adult, uh, whatever. Whether it was drugs. Alcohol it may have been something sexual, um, whatever it was. Depression, it mental illness. I've oh, that, seen that it. Some of them prostitution, some of them that been out there on the poles, done did it all. But the key is, what is you it? You might have been the pin putting them on the poles. We don't know. Okay, there you go. But there was something, whatever it was, that God didn't kill you in the, or let you die in the midst of, right there. Right there, as I've been saying, each one reach one. That's where you need to reach back. So if you used to be a, a alcoholic, been and, and you don't have Liar. the taste in your mouth anymore, Eve. there's it, there's no more residue. Meaning you don't desire that bottle. You free. Meaning you've been healed, set free, and delivered from the bottle. Okay, there there's you see a bunch of alcoholics out there on the street. Try to help somebody. You may not reach them all, but just, it's, it's called one. If you could reach just one, if you've been out there uh, prostituting, what better person to re reach a uh, prostitute than an ex-prostitute? You've been healed. You've been set free. You've been delivered. You don't do that anymore, but you're no better than them because you've been there, done that. So what better mm -hmm. person to tell them if God made a way of escape for me? Okay, come on, baby. I got you. God God made a way for me, and we gonna work. I'm going to walk you through this. The drugs, same thing. Drug addict, same thing. Drug dealers, same thing. If you've been to prison, same thing. It does not matter. Whatever God delivered, healed, and set you free from and didn't let you die in the midst or in the middle of, it's called evangelism. Go back Pretty much. And witness. Go back and witness to someone. Grab them by the hand and pull them along. Tell them, come on, I got you. And every time they get ready to fall, you got to sometimes be uh, that, 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 that standing, that block, that standing block to help them get up again. They may fall one or two times just like you did, but every time you fall, you got back up. But when he freed you, now is the time to walk and help somebody else get through, to get healed, set free, and delivered. 
It's an each one reach one thing. But we got to come out of denial that this stuff is happening. It is happening. And right now, it speaks for itself. I'm not going to call nobody's name, but the, the covers are being snatched off the folks for raping, molesting, and, and doing all kinds of stuff in the, in the house of God. Right. In the house of God, and God is not pleased with us. God is not pleased. The, the church is supposed to be a hospital, not the place of us continuing to go deeper into our sins. It's, this, this ugh, I'm just at awe. I am really at awe that the churches that are now that were mega churches that are now dwindling, the folks are not even going in. They'll tell you in your face. I can do what y'all do out here. And y'all do something in there that we're doing out here. And you better be careful because some of them, they see and they're calling some of these leaders out. And they will tell. And as I said, I have a second one and a third one somewhere because as I said, for Judah Dove, I got lines for them and personal lines and all. But the, those folks will call you out on these things. It's called a cell phone. Meaning they take pictures. Videos. If they see you somewhere out of place and out of pocket, you don't even realize they're recording you. They're taking pictures of you. So what is it that you could possibly say, as you would say, to a sinner when they see you doing the same exact thing that they're doing? Right. Guys, for those of those people that says it doesn't take all of that, it kind of do take all of that. All and of that is not for you. All of it, all of that is for your witnesses. Do not destroy your witnesses. That means you might feel like you have arrived and you can have that liquor or that joint or whatever you want to call it, the pills, and you're getting away with it. Or you can handle it because now you're at a different level. But do not destroy your witnesses. If you are doing something and when people think about leaders, church leaders, men and women of God, they already have a preconceived image of what we should be like. Even if they don't read the word, somebody, a grandma, was telling them about the word. So yeah. they know what we're supposed to look like. Come and on. if we don't match that image, they really don't want to come in that door. And we are responsible and we are accountable to feed the sheep. But the problem is, what are we feeding the sheep? Are we feeding them something with nutrients or are we feeding them drunk food that's going to give them disease and kill them? And that's what we got to work on as a people. So go. We already gave you all the resources. You can find it. The page, Judah Dust page, is on our page. So you can just scroll down and we'll repost it. And you can find, I'm going to tag the last video under this one. And you guys can find all of the resources that you guys need. You can also go to my website, shannysalmon.com. And you can find and you can put in your prayer request, request help. That's why we're here. Our inbox is open for you and to you to make you the best you that God called you to be. We're going to fix us before we try to fix the world. It start with that us, bitch, right? You have to. We got to take the, the plank out of out our own eye before we try yes. to pluck it out of somebody else's yes. eye. Yes. And that's the word of God. So, Prophetess, do you have anything else to share with us before we pray and get ready to let them go? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would say this again, and as she stated, our website, please go now. We, I, I really, I solicit, I solicit your prayers. Not just for me, but for the survivors. Right. And for those that sit upon the pews in, in, our, in the churches that are wounded warriors, that they would seek out and, and get the deliverance they need. Amen. But let, if I may, let, let me just say this real quickly. I need your support. If you're in the Atlanta area, I, I'm sending this out as somewhat as a fleece. I'm going to be possibly looking for at least two more counselors to work with an amazing woman. Sharon, I, if you're listening at the sound of my voice, you're an amazing woman. But I'm going to be looking for two more counselors. I'm going to be in, um, here shortly, need a lot more volunteers. And lastly, I'm looking for at least three new board members. And if you're not serious, please don't reach out to me. But I'm looking for this. And lastly, I need your financial support because there's a lot of these young girls. They don't have insurance. 
they're on, uh, I don't like calling it welfare, but it's called public assistance. And a lot of times they, they don't have it. They don't, they need tokens for the bus and different things. We are now in the process of becoming, uh, we're, you know, more centrally located so that we'll be more accessible so these survivors can come and they can, you know, get the services that they need to be, as I just said, to be healed, set free, and delivered so they can move on with life and being successful. A lot of things we offer, like I said, some of the services, just not counseling. You know, we, you know, we teach them about etiquette. We teach some of them, they never, you know, so no one in the family has ever been to college. They don't even know the steps of filling out applications to go to college or even to visit colleges. Uh, they know anything about getting, you know, um, like you say, grants uh, um, and um, what was the, um, oh God, it just slipped my mind so quick. But you know what I mean when you're going to college. And right. some of their mm -hmm. grades are so amazing that they can get scholarships. But they, mm -hmm. they don't know. They don't know because no one in their family. So there's a lot of, we just try when it comes to the family itself to assist them in any way we can to get them, you know, out of that place of suicide or thinking no one loves them, no one cares. And, you know, Keep that they can live a whole, yes, to live a whole and wholesome life. You know, and just like I said, to go on to get married, to have children of their own. And, you know, to have successful relationships, you know, even some of them now. Successful is the they're key. Old, yes. They're, you know, in a, you know, up in age, but they're telling us I'm not successful at keeping no one in my life, whether it be a male or a female. If it's a man, he's saying, I can't keep a woman because this happened to me and this, this and that. And yes, I have even testimonials from men that wow. through our services. That they're now they were able to go home and, and talk with their spouses about infidelities and all sorts of things, you know, that they can move on with life. But we need your help. We need your support. So, yes, please, if you would, go now. Go to judadove.org. And please, for as little as a cup of coffee from Starbucks, if you would. Nothing is ever too small. $5, $10, $20, $30. It's tax deductible as well. When they see that you mm -hmm. give to a nonprofit organization and that it's a donation, you can use that during your tax return for the next year. So again, and if you know someone, please, please don't let them suffer in pain. Mm -hmm. Give them some help. Sit down, talk to them, and, and, and try and convince them to go and get the help that they need. Because as I said, we talked about the things that are happening now, but again, I will not go any further again without mentioning, we have so many babies that committed suicide, all because someone violated them and they couldn't handle it. Mom right. opened the door, finding them hanging and all sorts of things. The devil is a liar. I speak, decree, and again, and I declare that you'll be healed, you will be set free, and you'll be delivered. You can be, but the first step is wanting some help, opening up. We're here to help, and we will walk you through it in mm -hmm. and with love. This is who we are and what we do. The Judah right. Dove Center. Everything we do is all done in love. We do it in love. We're going to love you back to life. That's it. who we are, and that's what we do. So if mm -hmm. you share this with someone, anyone that you know, Put it if those of you that are on Facebook that are listening now or that may listen to this sometime later, share it. Please share it on your page because this is what's plaguing the world now, that people are taking advantage of our children, women and children, and yes, of our young men. It's happening to them too. Right. And guys, if you have, if you know a person and they're going through these things give them the website so give them a link to the page if you don't even know how to address it just forward the link to them and let them reach out go on our website our contact information is there and just tell them you know what here's a website check it out if that's all you can do that can literally save somebody's life if you don't know how to address it don't just forward the information and let the people that 
is in place to do it, do it for you, and that will take that pressure off of you. So we're going to pray. Well, one last I, thing before you yes. pray, John. I'm going to go a step further. This goes out to anyone that's a part of the five-fold ministry as well. I speak to you now. I speak to you now. Anyone that's a part of the five-fold ministry, if you're in leadership in any form, fashion, or capacity in the house of God, in the king, within the kingdom of God, and you know you have flesh issues or that you've experienced or that you were victimized or that you are a survivor and you need help, you have to remember everything is, is confidential, but you need to get help. You need to get help. And you need to do it soon, meaning as soon as now. You need to get some help. Because as I said, there are seers on the pews. There are watchmen on the wall. And they can see. And we don't need you to be a wounded warrior. We don't need you to continue to be a wounded warrior. You need to wholeheartedly be able to stand before God's people. And to get them healed, set free, and delivered. Remember, you're the shepherd. These are your these are the sheep. Right. And you don't need to be wounding your you you don't need to be that that person that's wounding the sheep, that's killing and destroying God's people. They're coming to the church already wounded for help and for healing and for deliverance and for restoration. Right. But if you can't, if they can't get it in the house of God, then where can they go? Amen to that. So I say to you again, get some help. Right. And if, if you're not ready, then sit down. Please. Don't stand before God's people, a wounded warrior. Please don't. Because again, hurting people hurt other people. Right. Get some help. We're here. We're here. And again, silent no more. Silent no more. Silent no, no more. One. Silent no more. Silent no more. You want to pray for us, prophetess? Father God, we thank you for this hour. Father God, we thank you for this mm -hmm. session. God, we thank you for those that at the sound of my voice that are listening, Father God. God we thank Father you for God. those, the survivors. Let, I'm just, God, I want to thank you for every yes, survivor, God. world and nationwide. My God. God, I speak healing, restoration, and deliverance in this hour to every survivor. Father, take control of their lives right now. Give them everything yes, that they need to get them healed, set free, and delivered. These are your sheep. These are your people, Father God. I ask that you continue to bless, but yet cover them in the blood. Father God, before you bless them with the materialistic stuff, God, give them freedom in their heart, their mind, their souls. Free their minds, Father God. Free them up. Give them the desire to be healed, set free, and just Free of God, I, I can't not ask you enough to heal, set free, and deliver. Yes, Lord. Because I feel the hurt. I feel the pain for those, Father God, that desire help but don't know how. God, let them see, Father. You said, come unto me. All ye that are heavy burdened, Lift the burdens, God. Lift the burdens. Yes, Lord. Free them. Loose them now. Be healed. Be delivered and be set free in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Loose here, Satan. I bind you in the God. name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Loose your hold. Loose your hold and let yes, God's Lord. people go. Let them go. They don't belong to you. I speak yes, decree and declare healing, restoration, and deliverance. Mm, Jesus. And God, start with yes, the mind. My God. Start with their mind. In the name of Jesus. Free their mind, Father. Let them know that, that 
without an open mind and a free mind, there is no deliverance. I speak and decree free minds right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And for those that have the burden of friends and relatives that they know that have been victimized, Father, release the burden. Release the burden. Release the guilt. And for those that have been predators, Father God, he'll set free and deliver them now in the name. on father right now free their mind set them free heal them deliver them right now it's all about praying for this nation for this world to be healed set free and delivered and that we can become united as a kingdom a powerful kingdom a powerful force that we can take back every survivor oh god in the name of jesus Every wounded warrior in the name of Jesus. Deliver us, heal us, free us. That we can walk in power and authority the way that we should. Yes, Lord. God, and we don't be so careful to give you all the praises and the glory and the honor because it's not about us. It's all about you, that you get the glory out of all of this. Yes. Yes, Lord. We the honor, the praises, and the glory in advance. God, we thank you for every vessel that's being healed. Praise. Rise up, God. Yes, Show Lord. yourself strong and mighty, Father, in this world to free us. From the hands of the hearts of time. For every trick, Father God, we send it back to him, to the pits of hell where it belongs. Jesus. In the name God, of we, Jesus. We thank you for deliverance. We thank In you for deliverance. We thank Jesus. you for this session. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for the broadcast. We thank you for the woman of God that you've given this vision to. Jesus. God, now elevate her the more, Father God. Elevate her the more. Jesus. Take this ministry to a whole nother realm. I yes, speak, Lord. decree, and I declare it. I yes, speak Lord. open doors. Yes, Lord. Get where Jesus. you gave her this vision, God, I speak and decree yes, the provision to take it yes, a world Lord. and nationwide, God. Deliverance is yes, needed. Lord. Give her what yes, she Lord. needs, Father God. Yes, it's all Lord. about you, Father God. Her being yes, obedient Lord. to you to do what you've commissioned and called and, and chosen yes, for her to do as well as to be. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you. Yes, we thank, we you, thank Lord. you. And we can't we thank you Lord. enough. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you. Thank God, you. Uh, thank oh, yeah. you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for keeping us, keeping our mind. Yes, keeping Lord. us in such a in such a place in yes, a position Lord. that we can do exactly what you've told us to do. Yes, to God. let our, our yes, stories Jesus. and our testimonies be heard, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So God, let them let let it flow now. Thank you, let Lord. the river flow. Thank you, Lord. Let the river of freedom flow, God. Let the yes, river of freedom yes, flow. Lord. Let it, let it flow. That the survivors yes, will come forth with their stories and their testimonies. Yes, that they'll reach out to a brother and or a sister. Yes, Lord. That they can be healed, set free, and delivered. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify we you, God. We magnify you, Lord. And, oh, 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 God. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. I, I, I. I, I better let this thing go because I feel God. I, mm. I, I just, oh God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Glory 
Glory to your name, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. God, this thing is bigger than us, God. We thank you. We're going over again, Lord God, and we tell you thank you. God, this thing is bigger than us, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Heal, deliver, set free. Yes, Lord. That is my prayer. That is my cry. Heal, deliver, set free. Yes, Cover Lord. your children in the blood, God. Your sons yes, and your daughters, God. Cover them in the blood, God. This new yes, millennial, this millennial group, cover them in the blood. Bring them forth with a strong yes, and mighty Lord. word, Father God. In the name of Jesus, let them rise up like never before. Yes, Lord. To win souls, to bring them back unto the fold, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, fill Lord. The, fill, fill the hospital, which is the church, once again, oh God. Yes, Lord. Fill it, oh God. Fill us, oh God. Refill us, Father God. Your us out that you need to be refilled. Thank you, again, Jesus. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Refill us, oh God, that we can be refilled, oh God. Yes, but let Lord. him set the outpouring in the end for me, everything of you and from you, God. All of you, God, and yes, none Lord. of us, Father God. Kill us up of all flesh, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Fill us up of all flesh, God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Burn it off. Burn it off, oh God. That we would die to feel. Oh God. Yes, Lord. To this body that you, that you just birthed us in, Father God, but just kill it, kill the flesh, God, kill our flesh, destroy it, God, refill us, God, rebuild us, restore us, oh God, that we would walk upright and live holy and godly according to your word, oh God. But some of us are sick, oh God. We're wounded, oh God. We're with this ease and discomfort oh god and whatever it may be god heal us deliver us and free us in the name of jesus we pray yes, thank amen jesus, and thank god amen thank you lord guys thank you so much for watching and all the resources you guys know it's going to be coming up sometime tonight so remember when life hit us we do not quit we elevate and this is one of those moments that it hits we're not gonna quit we're gonna work through it and elevate from it so god bless you guys we love you guys we cherish you mm -hmm. we cherish your purpose and that's why we're here every week so we will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m for another round of the gifted so have a great night god bless you guys and we'll see you tomorrow god bless you thank god you bless god bless you. prophetess